Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we are talking about what happens if you forget to change your oil on time. Now if your question is, is it okay if I forget to change my oil on time? The answer is no. The end, very simple. However, this is engineering explained. We can do a little bit better than that. So if your question is, how bad will it be for my engine if I forget to change the oil on time? Well, suddenly that's a much more complicated question with a much more complicated answer. And so that's what we're going to get into in this video. Now, one of the most important properties of an oil is its viscosity rating. So if you take a look at a bottle of oil, it may say something like 5W30. And that number is giving you its viscosity rating. So the 5W is indicating the viscosity rating when the oil is cold, the W standing for winter, and then the 30 is indicating that oil's viscosity when it is hot. Now, generally speaking, the viscosity of that oil will remain the same throughout the useful life of that oil. But as that oil is used, it oxidizes. And so that oxidation occurs because of the heat, the oxygen, the pressure, the environment that this oil is within. And so as that oxidation occurs within that oil, eventually its viscosity starts to increase. Uh, so there's multiple reasons for that increase in viscosity, part of it being the oxidation, part of it being that the volatile components within that oil, the lighter components uh, that cause it to be a bit more thin, start to burn off. And you also, as time goes on, you start to include and increase the number of contaminants within that oil. So all of that results in the viscosity eventually starting to go up as you have that within your engine for longer and longer. Now, how long does that take? That's unknown. You know, it's going to depend on the oil that you're using and it's going to depend on the engine that you're using. But at a certain point, as you start to hit this point of the curve where the viscosity starts to really go upwards, that's where you're going to start to run into danger because you're not going to have proper flow within your engine. And without that proper oil flow within the engine, you're not going to have proper protection and you're going to start to increase wear. Another thing we need to consider is oil consumption within an engine. So all engines will burn oil. And so in preparation for this video, one of the things that I did was I started closely monitoring the oil consumption within my own car. And to my surprise, and I was happy to find out, uh, the oil consumption was actually pretty low. So I changed the oil about every 6,000 miles and the oil level was still within the parameter of where it should fall uh, during those 6,000 miles. Now it only has 20,000 miles on the car itself, so it's still a relatively new engine, and so you wouldn't expect to see too much oil consumption. As engines age, they tend to increase the amount of oil that they start to consume. So why do engines consume oil? Well, there's three major sources for that oil getting into the combustion chamber and then burning off. The first one being the valve guide. So as your intake valve is moving up and down, you have oil lubricating that interaction and that oil can leak down within to your intake and then eventually work its way into the engine where it is burned in the combustion chamber. You also have a positive crankcase ventilation system. So within your engine, you build up this high pressure beneath your pistons and that high pressure needs somewhere to go. So there's a ventilation system which allows that high pressure to be routed back to your intake. Well, some of the oil mist that forms within your crankcase can then be routed back into your intake. And as a result, then you can burn that oil mist within your engine. And finally, you use oil to lubricate the cylinder walls with that piston cylinder interaction. So a third location where that oil will be interacting with the combustion chamber and thus burning off. So what is the danger of burning off oil? Well, obviously our worst case scenario is we just burn off literally all of it. So there's no oil remaining and our engine has no lubricant. And as a result, it gets way too hot. Uh, a ton of wear is going to occur because you're gonna have metal on metal interaction and it's going to lead to catastrophic failure. So that's of course the worst case scenario. What's more more likely to actually happen uh, is if you're just you know a little bit late on getting to your oil change is you're just going to have less overall oil within the engine and this poses a problem because as you have less and less oil in that engine working well then that remaining oil is going to have to work even harder to protect your engine so because there's less of it overall within the engine it's going to start to oxidize faster and as a result you're going to start to have more negative effects occurring more rapidly as that oil level starts to decrease also if the oil starts burning off but you leave behind contaminants the percentage of contaminants, especially those dangerous metal contaminants, which could be wear from the engine, are going to increase within that oil, which can lead to additional wear. Uh, so it starts to kind of spiral out of control, and that's where you kind of start to see, you know, these, these curves right here, where all of a sudden that oil is now oxidizing significantly quicker, it's getting significantly thicker, and the contaminants are increasing rapidly within it. Now, motor oils are actually really complicated, and they include all kinds of different additives, which are important for your engine's health. And 
And so this is not a complete list of all the additives you can expect to find in an oil, but we are going to touch on some of the major ones here. And so we're going to work through different additives, talk about what they are, what they are used for within the oil, and then what the consequence is of, you know, using that oil for far too long and not changing your oil on time. So the first one, antioxidants. And oxidation is the primary cause of oil degradation. So antioxidants are super important in reducing that rate of oxidation. So the consequence of waiting too long is that this oil starts to break down more and more, losing its effectiveness, and you have an increase in wear within your engine. We also have anti-wear additives. For example, zinc can be used to do this. And these zinc additives help react with rough surfaces to create a sacrificial barrier and to help smooth out that surface uh, so that you reduce the friction there and reduce the amount of wear that you have. So over time, as you start to use up that zinc and start to remove those sacrificial barriers, it loses its effectiveness. And of course, you're going to have more wear. If you have something preventing wear and it goes away or it's not as effective anymore, you have more wear. Detergents are very important for preventing corrosion within the engine and helping to prevent sludge from building up within the engine. So over time, as that sludge starts to build up and your detergents start to lose their effectiveness, well, that sludge can get within passageways and reduce oil flow within those passageways. And so if you reduce that oil flow through those passageways, well, of course, you're getting less oil through them, you're getting less protection, you're increasing friction, and you are increasing wear. This can also lead to, if you have a decrease in the effectiveness of your detergents, you can have excessive carbon deposits starting to form within your engine. Also helping to prevent carbon deposits, we have dispersants. And dispersants are really cool. They'll actually surround deposit precursors they'll attach themselves to it and they'll suspend that deposit precursor within the oil oil so it just circulates within the engine perhaps the filter will be able to filter it out and if not it just continues to circulate within that engine but it doesn't attach to anything and form a harmful carbon deposit so these dispersants help to suspend that deposit and in doing so you don't have those deposits forming within your engine of course the longer you wait the more these you know, deposit precursors are going to be held within your engine. So if you don't change it out, well, you've got all those deposits floating around in your oil, just waiting and waiting and waiting to attach to something. And you're never actually removing that, removing all those deposits from your engine. It's actually a good thing, you know, to see that dark oil coming out. It means you're taking out all of those contaminants when you change the oil. However, you don't want those contaminants in there forever. So you need to change your oil on time. Now, viscosity modifiers are also a very interesting additive. And so these can be used to allow for multi-grade oils. So for example, if you look at a graph of a viscosity versus temperature, viscosity being our vertical axis, temperature being our horizontal axis, low temperature over here, high temperature over here, very thick fluids up top, low thickness fluids down here at the bottom. And if you look at different grades of oil, so say an SAE 30, which is thicker than an SAE 5. Now, both of these oils, as you heat them up, their viscosity will decrease. However, if you add viscosity modifiers to an SAE 5, you can change the characteristic of it. So at low temperatures, it will remain the same. It'll remain a SAE 5 rated viscosity oil. However, as you get to those higher temperatures, these viscosity modifiers start to expand out. And as they expand out, they start to thicken that oil. And so it acts more like an SAE 30 oil at higher temperatures. And so if you start to have these break down, well, then you will notice a decrease in the viscosity of the oil once it's at operating temperature. So you may see initially a drop in the uh, oil's viscosity as you start running it within your engine. And that's because those viscosity modifiers, as they expand out, they're susceptible to being sheared, split into different parts. And then you have a decrease in viscosity because those viscosity modifiers are no longer being effective. Now, ultimately, oxidation is gonna play a stronger role and your viscosity is going to increase. But you may see an initial dip as a result of these viscosity modifiers being worn out. Motor oils can also contain pore point depressants. And so these are really important for improving low temperature flow. So if you live in a cold area, it's important to have these pore point depressants to make sure that you have plenty of flow on startup. Of course, during startup, it's a critical time to make sure that oil is flowing within the engine to make sure you don't have too much wear. And so if these pore point depressants start to wear out, then your oil is too thick at startup and you don't have proper flow within the engine. So in that really critical moment where you need that oil circulating within the engine on startup when the engine is cold, uh, you're gonna have excessive wear occurring because you can't get that thick fluid to flow within the engine. And finally, we get to foam inhibitors. So if you look within the crankcase of your engine, you've got that crankshaft and it's rotating around and it's splashing the oil all over the place. And in splashing that oil, 
soil, it can create a foam and start to create bubbles. So these foam inhibitors work to reduce that air and oil bubble surface tension so those bubbles pop very easily and you don't create a foam within the engine. So if these are no longer useful, then you're going to have that oil foam up. It's going to reduce your oil pressure and it can cause cavitation where you have that sloshing of the oil, which means you won't have protection and without that protection, it can lead to additional wear. So going back to our original question, how do we know, you know, if we waited too long to change our oil, how do we know if we did any damage? Well, thankfully there are actually labs out there where you can submit a sample of your oil. So you take some of the oil from your engine and you submit it to this lab and they can tell you, you know, they'll analyze it based on its viscosity, looking at metals within the oil, and they can tell you, hey, here's where your oil's at. This was way too long. Uh, you should not have waited this long. You did some damage to these components of your engine, or hey, you were fine. After Actually, everything was in the normal spec of an engine oil, so you're okay. You don't need to worry about it. So if you're really curious, oops, I waited too long, I went 5,000 miles over, whatever it may be, and you want to know, did I actually cause some damage? You can take a sample of your oil, send it to these third-party labs uh, that will test it, and then say, hey, here's what's going on with your oil. And you know, they're kind of looking at these things and saying, this is what changed with your oil. Here's where you're at. Was it okay? Was it not? So a huge thank you to Progressive for sponsoring the video, and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.